Psalms chapter 5. I know, that's how I feel too. Yeah, I already knew that. Oh, yeah, I can feel the difference. No, I did, I did perceive that. <clears throat> Ephesians 5, and uh, let's see. <clears throat> We're going to read verse 32 and 33. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. <clears throat> that really comes off of uh, the sharing just above it from verse 22 down to that. <clears throat> and... Um, Paul is explaining from the verses that we just read that the marriage relationship is a shadow of Christ and the church. <clears throat> um, and so the explanations to married couples, and this isn't just about married couples, but this is, you know, this is the basis from which uh, Paul starts talking about Christ and the church. Um, that that basis is really just a shadow and that the real thing that this thing was always about, that means every married couple, everybody that's ever uh, <clears throat> experienced this, that that relationship is only a shadow and a mystery because it concerns Christ and us. We're the church, right? All right. So in that same sense, and of course uh, the church is made up of male and female, but in reality there's neither male nor female, but Christ is all and in all, and that is the life that we have. <clears throat> um, so you have to, when you read this about marriage and married couples and what have you, you have to forget about that actual thing, and you have to realize that this is supposed to be the relationship and how we relate to Jesus and how he relates to us. So let's look at verse 22. <clears throat> Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. So this is telling us that, that our, we should be submitted to the Lord. Um, and then it says, verse 23, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. <clears throat> because in the in a relationship, uh, the wife is also considered his body, and that's based on spiritual truth. And that means that we are not supposed to just be, you know, let me say it like this. Uh, a lot of people talk about the body of Christ, and we say, well, we're his body, but they're really talking about just the people that are sitting here saying we're his body. But in reality, what is his body is where he lives in us. When he lives in us or where he lives in us, that's we're functioning as his body. I mean, in other words, if Jesus says, go pray for that person uh, and he's living in you, then you, you're literally his vessel. You're literally the vessel of Christ. You are the body of Christ. You are functioning as his body. <clears throat> so let me just say this. Just coming to church doesn't make you his body <laughs> or just praying or Prayer doesn't necessarily mean that you're doing that as his body or, you know, taking care of children's church or da-da-da-da, leading worship or anything else. None of that guarantees that we're functioning as his body or as his bride. None of that guarantees that unless Christ in us is producing those things. Now, we know that nobody's perfect and that we're all growing up in Christ and that he's, he's being formed more and more in us. Okay, so, you know, in that reality, uh, none of us fully function in that manner, <clears throat> but that becomes the goal. And that's really, interestingly enough, <clears throat> sort of what it's laying down here for married couples is that you're supposed to be, you know, moving into that relationship with Jesus more and more and letting it manifest 
uh, outwardly in your marriage. Okay, so it says, verse 24, or, um, <clears throat> well, let's go to verse 25. Husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. <clears throat> um, so, <laughs> interestingly enough, um, it's not telling us to just love our wives. It's telling us to love them as Christ and to give ourselves in a cross-centered manner. I'm just going to say it like that, in a cross-centered manner. In other words, where Christ crucified is the heart and soul of what's going on instead of just two people going, I'm in love and I, everything's wonderful, and, you know, which it's not because divorce is so high. We know, <laughs> you know that there are lots of problems, and, that's, and it's about equal now even in Christianity. <clears throat> um, verse 26, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word, and, and so that's, that's the relationship. I mean, they're really, God is the one who set up marriage. You know, he's the one who started with Adam and Eve. And uh, he set that up. And the way that the man is supposed to function is in terms of what Christ does with us. He's supposed to be washing with the word. There's supposed to be a spirit of washing uh, the bride with the word. Well, the Lord does that with us as the body of Christ, as the church, as the, he, he does that regularly and washes us. <clears throat> and then um, verse 27, that he might present it to himself a glorious church. And, and so uh, I think these words are like a, a signal to us <clears throat> that Jesus does this not just to make us better Christians, Jesus is not just trying to populate the planet with Christians. He is trying to present us to himself in a certain manner, in a certain spirit, in a certain relationship with him that is more than just, I'm going to say it like this, that's more than just trying to be Christian. Because, you know, do you realize that just trying to be a Christian doesn't necessarily mean that you have any contact all through the week with Jesus? Right? Don't you, I mean, aren't you aware that there are probably Christians that never talk to the Lord during the week, never think about him, never, you know, but they come to church and they go, oh, yes, I love Jesus and I love thinking about him four times a month. That's a joke, folks. That's a joke. Christ is supposed to be our life, amen? <laughs> and the, where does he live? Oh, he lives in the building, you know. He's, he's in here somewhere. And when we come in on Sunday morning, we need to hunt and find him. No. He's in us. We're the church, not the building. And he wants to live in us, and he wants to live uh, with us relating to him, it's interesting because a husband and wife actually are two, but it says the two become one, but not the way the bride and not the way the body of Christ, not the way <coughs> the church becomes one with him because the church becomes one where he's in us and we're the vessel of his life. It is so one that it is not my, you know, not me always praying my will. Not me always praying my earthly wants. Not me always trying to um, uh, get hold of God when I'm in trouble. And all those things are fine and we all do it and we're all blessed and guilty. <laughs> because God is gracious to us. He, he answers those kind of prayers, but not all the time. And not forever. Eventually he's going to want us to grow up. <clears throat> and so... Um, then verse 28, so ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. Um, for no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth it and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. Uh, for we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bone. Okay, so um, let's read verse uh, 33 again. <clears throat> Nevertheless, let every one in, of you in particular so love his wife even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. So, and it's already told us 
that the wife should submit to the husband. But remember, this is talking about Christ and the church, the reality, not just doing a symbolic thing. It's, it's the same as just eating communion, you know. And, you know, not to put anybody down, but, you know, Catholics eat, Catholics eat communion and they eat that bread and they say that's Jesus. And you're putting, that's literally Jesus. And I'm going, really? That's, that's Jesus. That's, he can get pretty small. And I'll tell you what, I'm in trouble then because we had communion over there. And I always get a little piece, not a big one. So I got a, a little piece of the bread. Was sitting over there and holding my cup and stuff. And I, I apparently I'd got a real little piece. And I turned to do something and it was gone. It was gone. That's right. I'm going, oh, my God, I've lost Jesus. And he's not going to be in me. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's not going to be in me. And it's all over with. And now I'm supposed to preach. <clears throat> but Christ is in me and in you already if you're born again. Amen? You're not putting him in there. You're just That's just a symbol. Well, guess what? We can, you know... Protestants are pretty good. We figured out that that stuff's just a symbol. It's not really his blood. You know, it's really, no, it's not. You know, I know that hacks you vampires off, but it's not. You know, <laughs> it's, it is just a symbol. But so is marriage. And if all we ever do in that term is just that, then we're just doing, we're just symbolically doing something that was a picture of Jesus, but, but never meant to replace him or put that away. All right. So, um, you know, the, I've heard guys come to me. I've had to do marriage counseling over the years, and I had, had a couple come once, and the guy said to me, well, she's supposed to submit to me. And she's not submitting to me, and the Bible says she's supposed to sit, submit to me. <clears throat> and I said, yeah, but doesn't it say, you know, basically this is a, a shadow, and doesn't she have every right to say to you, I will submit to you to the degree that you're submitting to Jesus? <laughs> well, she ain't even married. So <laughs> Whatever it is. But in that, but doesn't that make sense? That that uh, it's a it's a picture, and we're supposed to be living the real. So she has every right to say, well, you know, whatever degree, you know, how you know, and turn to him and go, how how big is that degree that you're submitting daily and momentarily at every moment to Jesus? Well, you know, not very much. Okay, well, I'm not going to submit to you very much. But there's still something greater, isn't there? And the greater is our relationship and our heart toward Jesus. And that's what it said over here. It said that he might, um, let's see. Gosh, am I going to have to read the whole thing to find it here? that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing by the word, that he might present it to himself. Present what? Us. The goal, the eternal goal, isn't to go evangelize the world and just make Christians. The goal is to, and Jesus even said that. He used the word disciples, which is not just a Christian. He said, go into all the world, make disciples. Okay, so this is people that followed Jesus, that gave themselves, that quit this, and they quit doing that, and they said, Jesus is going to be my focus, and Jesus is going to be my heart. Well, even that, discipleship and that term falls so short of oneness with Jesus that is going to call something out of us more than a religious God that's up there, you know. I mean, we've got, you know, Protestants have no right to accuse Catholics if that's all we're doing is serving some sort of religious, almost imaginary God, whereas if it's Christ living in you, you know the difference. How many of you know the difference when it's Christ living in you and you, you know? <clears throat> so 
Someone once told me a long time ago, they said, Randy, the wonderful thing about you is we always know when it's the earthen vessel or when it's Jesus. <laughs> you know? I said, we never have any doubts, you know. <laughs> but anyway, so, um, so there is this, this heart that has to be formed. Are y'all listening? A heart that has to be formed in us that is more than just going through the motions for God and really just using God for our own ends. And, and might I say temporal ends because we're only down here for a little while. So we say, well, I'm down here for a little while. So, Lord, you know, I really need a car for work. Or how about this one? Lord, I really need a car to get to church. But could you make it a BMW? You see what I mean? You see the point. The point is one is a need and the other was a want. But we stretch it out to include our wants and the things that we're after and the things that we think are important instead of he's trying to present us to himself. Okay. I'm going to just tell you this right now. Jesus doesn't ask for much. He doesn't think about it. He doesn't ask for much. I mean, we do. Constantly. He doesn't ask for much. The only thing Jesus wants, and this is, you get this in John 17, where Jesus has a prayer request. Jesus has a prayer request. And guess what? We're the only ones who can answer it. And his prayer is that we might be one with him the way he's one with the Father. Well, you think Jesus is like he's up in heaven and, you know, the Father's there. And, and Jesus says, well, you know, I'm going to check out the other side of heaven here for a couple of weeks. And, you know, I've got a friend over here. We're going to go hang out. And, you know, I'll, I'll check you later. And then gets busy and forgets the Father. And yeah, anybody following what I'm saying here? I don't think that's going on up there. They are one. They're not just united. They're not just committed to one another like some silly marriage. <laughs> They're one. Okay. One. What does that mean? One heart. One mind. One view. One care. One for another. So that, it, so that if he cares for us, if he loves and cherishes us as his own body, therefore he shows care for us, we need to be showing it back to him. Right? He ought to get something out of this. And he says, this is, this is why it's not just Christians. This is why it's not just Christianity. This is why it is my body, my church, my bride. All of those all of those designating special kinds of relationship. To be his body is one thing. To be his bride is another thing. To be all of that relating to all of us, regardless of gender. And so um, we've done some sharing before in the book of Esther, but if you'll turn there with me. Esther, <clears throat> it's uh, on page 562 <laughs> in my Bible. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Well, on my iPad, it's on page 666. Just kidding. iPads don't have page numbers. Like <laughs> Just messing with you. <laughs> All right. Uh, you know the story. It's the story of a king, and uh, there was a breakdown in the, his relationship with his wife, uh, and this king represents Jesus, and we get from it a picture of Jesus, and the, the wife, and in, the, in my sharing today, I'm just going to um, contrast uh, Vashti uh, and Esther, which are the two main characters in the first part here as just 
two different relationships as bride because they both were bride. So we're going to just look at it like that. Two different kind of relationships. And so the king throws a big party and he throws a big feast. I guess I should say big feast instead of party. It's a big religious feast. No, no. It was just a big party and he wanted all of his friends and all the people to come and, and everything. And um, and so they, they'd been going for seven days and something, and um, his wife at that time, her name was Vashti, and I guess you can call anybody Vashti that has this kind of relationship with Jesus as, as bride, as body, as church. She, he appointed her to teach the women, to share with the women. All the women of the kingdom were there, so it's a big deal a big deal you know she's got position and power and and something to say and 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 representing him amen okay <clears throat> so um, um verse 10 on the seventh day when the heart of the king was merry with wine he commanded uh, that guy and 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 that guy the seven chamberlains who served in the presence of Asherus the king to bring Vashti the queen before the king with the crown royal to show the people and the princes her beauty for she was fair to look on but the queen Vashti refused to come at the king's commandment by his chamberlains therefore was the king enraged and his anger burned in him <clears throat> and so um you have this situation. So here's the king, and he's got all of his people there, and they're all there having a great time and enjoying everything. And uh, he calls us. He calls out to our heart. He calls out to our heart. Because he's wanting to, he, there, I don't know how you explain this. You know, there are million, billion women on the planet. And every guy thinks his wife's the best looking and the best, you know, because, you know, I, I'm in love with her and I, da 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 da. So there is this thing that God put within us that is within Him that finds beauty in that which represents His heart, his, his bride, that which joins with him. And you, you might even say with Vashti, the relationship that she had with Jesus, with the king, was more based on union, unity, than oneness. Because unity can have two people. Just come here just for a second. Okay. So, we like one another, and we, we love Jesus, and we're serving the Lord and everything. But as long as it's just us two standing here, there's two of us. But when, when our hearts begin to come together in Jesus, and God begins to do something, then it's more than just unity. Churches have unity all over the place, don't they? You've, you've been, you know... But unity breaks down at certain times, doesn't it? Yeah. It breaks down all the time. <laughs> but oneness is a completely different animal. It is. And see, there can still be, because we're many people, right, but one body. Doesn't the scripture say that? We're many but one body. Okay, but so what? if we're many but one body, what makes us one? It's that same heart. For Jesus, not just I love Jesus and da 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 da, but we have the same desire and this passion, and 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 it's really not just for what, because a lot of people say I love Jesus, but they're after Jesus for things. You know, I love you, Jesus. Uh, could you do this for me? You know, and my boss is giving me a hard time, and would you supply me my finances and da 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 da. Amen. Goodbye. Amen. And he's going wait wait. You know, as we walking out of the throne room, I, I wonder. Just talk for you know. I'm busy. Now you get the idea of Vashti, don't you? 
Now you get the idea of Vashti. Um, some people have not recognized the difference between Jesus' heart and his call. Come on, listen carefully. Well, I'm called to do so and so. Well, guess what? Vashti was called to minister to the women. God, or the king, put her in that position. She didn't just do that on her own. He was wanting the, the ladies of the kingdom also to have a good, good time and a big banquet and everything. And, and she was going to oversee the whole thing. And she was doing it. And guess what? She'd been doing it for seven days. And apparently nothing was wrong with how she was doing it. Because he didn't call her in and go, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, that wasn't it at all. She had been doing a great job in the calling. But a lot of times we have a, a relationship with the king, with Jesus, that doesn't first tune into his heart. We tune into what he what he wants. Well, what do you want? What do you want? You know. Oh, did you you need that? Or you need some coffee or da da da, da or whatever? And just all and that's great. That's great. How wonderful is that? Except when he calls based on his heart, that is something completely different. You say, well, describe the difference. Ultimately, I can't describe the difference because it's a heart condition. <clears throat> but the difference it, it will cause a different reaction. <clears throat> it'll show up. And then it'll show up because here you have, you have Esther on this side and you got Vashti over here. And Esther, that whole situation hadn't come yet with Esther. But Vashti was doing the calling, busy serving, do, maybe doing everything for him. But when he calls on the heart condition, uh, I'm not coming. I am busy doing the king's stuff. What does the king want? He just wants you. Well, we got a big banquet going here. We got the whole freaking kingdom here. I'm sure she used those words. <laughs> you know, we got the whole kingdom here and, you know, uh, I don't want you to look bad by me just walking out on the calling. But it struck something so deep in him that it could not change after that because of a recognition of, of what was not there. See. <clears throat> now let me just say, you know, can I just say this? I'm not talking to you. <laughs> I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to Scott. No, no, no. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> you know where you're at and whatever, and if God speaks to you, good. And if he doesn't speak to you, don't assume that I'm judging you, okay? <laughs> know your relationship well enough to know, you know, it's not about that. It's, a, it's about if, if one person here, the Lord moves by the Spirit of God and, and, and says, Jesus wants me to step one step further. All of this has been fine. Vashti was doing a great job. My God, he, it never, she never was condemned for all that she'd done. And apparently she'd done a, a really good job. So much so that in his eyes, she was beautiful. But when it came to this heart issue, it, it, it failed his heart, not his calling. It failed his heart. All right. So, <clears throat> you know some of the rest of the story. This sends shockwaves through the kingdom. My God, the king's wife, she didn't come when the king said come, and we all have to, and, you know. And if she's not going to, you know, and they said, well, this can send ripples through and maybe we'll all just start, you know, coming if we want to. Coming when it's convenient. Coming when it doesn't mess with our ministry. You see, I mean, it, it's dangerous, actually. Because 
we forgot why he set all this up in the first place, that he might, it might, we might be unto him this. And we just got all wrapped up in everything else. And so, so anyway, a bunch of the, the other leaders, the, the king says, well, what should I do? And they all meet together and they're going, well, <coughs> you know, here's what we need to do. We need to get you a bride or we need to get you a body or we need to get you the church in a manner that that not only reaches your heart but is the kind of display to everyone else in the kingdom of what you're really after. Does that make sense? Yeah. To display that because it was really about <laughs> display to his heart anyway. This is mine. We're one. Oh, man. Okay, so that's the, that's the decision. <clears throat> All right, so they say, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to, to call all the ladies, not all of them, but a bunch of them from the kingdom. We're going to bring them in, <clears throat> and the, the king will be able to kick, uh, pick from uh, these different ladies that are there, and they are going to soak in the oils of the Holy Spirit for one year. One year. Does that sound familiar to anybody? <laughs> one, one year. Y'all didn't forget this, did you? <laughs> one year. <clears throat> and remember, Vashti represents one kind of relationship that's bride, but not fully what he wants. And Esther is going to represent the other. And remember, there are all these other ladies there, and they're all vying to become bride, because that's what he's after, not just queen, but bride. And so sh they all go through the process. Hello? They all go through the process, all one, one year. You know? And... It's, a, it's the oils and the soaking and the, is softening them to his heart and to, uh, is what he wants. And so they're going through all this time period. <clears throat> and then, you know, now we don't have this, but I bet you anything there was a vasty relationship mixed in with all those ladies who were vying for or trying to become bride of the king and become that which, remember, this is a great mystery, but we're talking about Christ and the church. Right? We read that. It's a great mystery. It's a great one. It's so great, most people don't know about it. You know? How great is it? Well, it's so great that you have to ask how great. You know? It is. Why is it a mystery? Why is it great? It's great to his heart. It's greater than just calling. It's greater than ministry. It's great to his heart. Why is it a mystery? Because he's not going to just flaunt it out there. His heart, the way that he, he is completely different than us. See, we always go, well, I want this and I want that and da 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 you know, and like I said, we come to the throne room and say, oh, Lord, give me this and do that and uh, and he, he never, you know, we never have a situation where we walk into the throne room and we say, dear Lord, and he goes, Sh shut up, this time I'm going to talk and I'm going to tell you about what's on my heart. N he'll never do that. Never. It's a, he'll keep it a mystery. It'll just be a mystery to us because we're so self-focused. We're so Christian but not Christ. And so Esther, she starts, she, she hooks up with the one who represents the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit every day is dealing with her. And the neat thing about this guy that, that is doing this, he knows the king. He knows the king, and you and me don't know Jesus the way we ought to. We just know him as a religious figure who did something on a cross that saved us from hell. This guy, the Holy Spirit, knows Jesus inside and out. 
And he's trying his best to communicate that. So, if he, and we're, the, the scripture used the example of different oils and frankincense and stuff. So if he brings, if he brings some of these oils to Esther, she goes, so she, she looks at it and she puts it on. She goes, this is what he likes. This is the fragrance that he likes. This is, I don't know if I even am looking at that. <laughs> this is the thing that, that he wants. It'll please him. Okay. Do you hear what's going on in her head and in her heart? Another one that's there trying to vie for becoming the bride. Holy Spirit brings those ointments. And she looks at him and she goes, these are gifts from God because he knows I'm so special. <laughs> you might see a difference between those two. Do you need me to say it again? Because there's going to be a test. If you fail the test, you can't get out of this building. <laughs> Scott's going, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> we're already out. We're just kidding. <clears throat> so, um, so, so one of them says, I have a bride heart. And the proof of that is he gives me special things. wrong but that's that's what one of them says or all of them or however many maybe all but one Esther and they're going oh the gifts from God and gifts to to show everybody that I'm special to him and everybody can see that I can flow in the gifts flow in the gifts <laughs> Esther can only think of one thing she might even think, you know, this isn't the fragrance I would have picked. But if he likes it, you know, I, when I was growing up, I'd date girls and stuff like this. I knew a girl, that, I wasn't dating her, but she, <laughs> but she, depending on her boyfriend, she'd change her perfume just like that, depending on what he liked. And going, long, 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 long. Well, in a certain sense, that's correct. But it can't be about man-pleasing. It has to be about the king's heart. Because nobody, nobody thinks of his heart hardly. Everyone is more focused on the calling what I can do for God, what God has called me to do. What God has called me to do is more important than what God has called you to do, you know. So you have problems with, you know, this and that. You have a uh, children's church going on back there and someone leading children's church. And you got, you got a meeting going on in the, the new room in there for married couples and somebody's leading that and, and you got, you know, and so people are fighting over people. And people, well, they're mine because my calling is to minister to this family because of their kids. And well, my calling is to minister to couples. Well, my calling is, and everybody is, ju it's just like this is it. This is all there really is. And the, if I'm going to ever be anything for God, I have to keep stepping up the ladder and become so big that I get my way with my calling. And Jesus looks at that and he goes, well, how you doing today, Vashti? Instead of Esther. See, you don't know how he sees you. I don't know how he sees me. I'd like for him to, you know, we'd all like to have that spirit that, that, and that heart that Esther has for the Lord. And we all would assume that. You've heard me say it before, but we read the book of Proverbs and it says the, the wicked man is da 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 but the, but the godly man is this. And we're always the godly person that we read that, you know. And we look around and we go, I know who the wicked person is, you know. <laughs> That's how we read the scriptures. We read it to please us, you know. We look in the mirror of our own face 
and we, con we conform everything and mold it after our own image. But so, so we might be putting on, this is spiritually, we might be putting on fragrances that he really doesn't like. Is that possible? You know, and we go, oh, Lord, I just want to be with you, you know. And I've soaked in these oils. The Holy Spirit didn't bring them. We liked them. We put them on. So we flop down. I'm sorry I'm using this example. We flop down in the bed with him, and he lays down there and goes, I can't take this. I just, you are covered. It smells like a skunk. <laughs> you know. I, I can't handle that. <clears throat> well, we, we, we haven't really sought, you know, and here's the deal. That fragrance may come from us sweating hard to do what he wants. Vashti did it right. She was sweating hard with the women, trying to have a great women's meeting for the glory of the kingdom and of the king. And it might have worked her into a fragrance that was not what he was after. And the proof of that was when he called her, she, she didn't respond to his heart because she couldn't see the difference. And in fact, when you can't see the reality of his heart, when you can't see it, when you cannot see it, you and I will violate him many times a day because that's why he did this, that he might draw to himself, that he might have unto himself. A bride, one after his heart, one after his kind, one after his kind. All right, so let's see. I don't know how I did it, but I hadn't even looked at my notes, and then I lost them while ago. <clears throat> um, so <clears throat> this year the Lord has told us that it's not about us, Right? And it's not about others. And it's not about us for others. Not this year. It's not about Vashti. It's not about Martha. It's about Mary. It's about Esther. Remember the other story, Martha and Mary, sisters. <clears throat> Jesus comes to the house. Mary sits at his feet and just wants to hear his word. She's just looking into his face and you know the scriptures say that as we look into his face we're changed anybody want to be changed changed into his image so she's down there and martha's cooking and she's doing it for jesus see i don't know that we can you know we're so busy looking for somebody who's not doing something right that we miss all the people who are doing it right but still not going after his heart. Martha's in there. I'm serving. I'm trying to get food ready for Jesus. Jesus is here. I'm sure he's hungry. I bet he's hungry for something more than food. Can I get amen? I bet he's hungry for, he's hungry for something more than food. And Martha's just, I mean, Mary's just on her knees before him listening to the word and just she, he's washing her what does that sound like with the water of the word and she's just going oh my god and I bet he's starting to open his heart to her because it's like you know clearly this she's not sitting on a pew in front of him a pew is church thing bench that you sit on <laughs> that's why we call them pew anyway She's, you know, she's drawing something out of him. Drawing something out. And Martha, you better believe that she, she is standing up for Jesus. Jesus, make Mary get over here and help. This, you know, time's getting late. We need some help. We got to get this done. We're doing it for you. Rebuke her. Rebuke her. I can't.
can't believe she's not in tune with you and, and the calling. Jesus said, let her alone, for she hath chosen the thing that is needful. I wonder if he was talking about what he needs or, I mean, you know. I mean, I wonder, I, I wonder, I wonder if every once in a while he just slips and tries to, but he won't, he won't put it in words that we can, only, only if our heart is with him, we go, oh my God, I think you might be talking about, you know, something he actually cares about. Because he so rarely does that. We're not talking about Vashti. We're not talking about Martha. We're not talking about anything this year that we think is so important. So we're only talking about those who are focusing on what is important, focusing on him. All right, so I wrote a few little sentences here. I guess they're questions. How many feel like a soaked, saturated sponge dripping with the presence and heart of Jesus at this stage of the year? You feel like a soaked, saturated sponge dripping with the presence and heart of Jesus so far this year? How many feel confident that you will bust through the finish line in June right where Esther was at the end of a year of soaking? Or how about this one? How many feel we as a body need to refocus our attention on him in this way? I feel that we do. I feel like we've lost focus, and I feel like, <clears throat> you know, we're being pulled in directions that are not evil. But it's not this year's focus. God has called our hearts to him and for him and not for other things. And so I just pray, and I've, I've been praying. I've been praying now for a good while because I could sense that something was off. And I just asked the Lord, would you, would you please, you know, Help me to see and to grasp what it is that's, you know, wh what the situation is, and then what can we do about it. And this isn't, again, this isn't for everybody. Some of you have continued to soak, but the Lord said as a whole, as a church, we're like a boat that's run aground on our goal. And... So, you know, my first thought is that's not good. That is not good. It's hard to get a big boat up. And he said, if the tide raises again, it'll lift the boat off of that. That's what he told me. If the tide raises back in this direction, it'll lift that boat. I just went, wow, that was easy. I wasn't even thinking of that. <laughs> And, I, and with it came the simplicity of, if you just put your hearts back on me and start focusing again, I'll take care of it. Because why? I can hear it. I mean, he's not saying it, but I can hear him saying, <clears throat> I just want you. And, and if you'll do that, the tide will rise again. And, and you will be off of that stuck place and able to move forward. So I just, I'm going to just close with that and just say, um, I don't know, Shay, you got any music you could put on back there? <clears throat> and just say, I, you know, my heart um, has been so, I don't know, broken. Hurting for Jesus' heart is a better way of putting it. Just just realizing that if we don't if we don't meet this year <clears throat> we talk about the 2020 vision which will be in, in the year 2020 but if we skip this step for this year this is a, just a step this is a step, y'all understand that? it's a step and if we skip this step or don't do it right 
there may not be any 2020 years. I mean, how, what greater step could they be than that we be faithful to focus on the heart of Jesus? I don't, I don't know that they're, you know, if I know that if we miss that, we can forget the future. I mean, we'll have one. You know, we can stay Christians. We can stay committed to the calling. You know, I'd say we can stay Vashti, but we can, but that we we reject that. But we can stay committed to the callings that God's called us here to do, and things like that. But I feel like, I feel, maybe you don't, but I feel like it, it's like slapping Jesus in the face to not. Stay on track just for, you know, I mean, I, I remember Jesus even with his very top disciples in the Garden of Gethsemane. Could you not pray with me for one hour? For one hour with him in his agony is one hour in a day. Okay, well, the next hour, can we be with him for, for a year? I'm just saying. Do that well in my opinion we failed but else in his opinion the tide can rise again the tide can rise again and get us off of that stuck place so any of you that just feel that that you you have faith for that and you would like to see that not because you're wrong or anything but you feel that and you'd like to have faith for that come on down here and let's just pray together and let's just stand together that God can get us unstuck and get us moving forward and don't come down unless you feel from the Lord and so you don't have to come down you know <clears throat> we're but we're doing this really because we want to stand together Amen. we want to stand together why don't we just hold hands or but let's just do it together can we? Can we do it together? Just be together. Yes. Hallelujah. You're calling us. You're, you're allowing us to get back in the saddle. But, Lord, you're also saying, but that, is, that doesn't depend on a miracle. That depends on our hearts as we let the tide rise again of this spirit. To put you first, to know you, to soak, to, to saturate in the oils of the Holy Spirit. Lord, help those that uh, help us by those who have put stuff on the web or sent stuff around to quicken us. May may that tide rise again. Lord, there are places pointed to on the web with things that can do that. There are others who've written things and mailed it to other people, and it's stirred our very hearts. Lord, in ways we haven't even thought, but let us encourage one another. Let us share the living word with one another. Let us long after your heart in front of others and not be ashamed and not feel like we're out of place. Let the walls of this place and the floors of this place be saturated in the oils of our heart, crying out, praying just loving you, just being with you, just wanting you, wanting you more than what we have, wanting you in a way that would just rise the ship off and let it finish its course. Lord, thank you. Thank you for this way out. Thank you 
But Lord, we ask that you allow the Holy Spirit to do that one, to be that one that brings those things to us, those oils and, and the things of your heart. Because we love you, and, and, and Lord, this, this church loves you. And when they hear things of your heart like this, they always respond. It always is, is our deepest desire. You first, not ourselves, not others, not us for others, but you first, especially this year. So, Lord, have your way. Have your way individually, and may each one's tears or prayers or cries or laughter or whatever that fills them bubble up, rise up. Get us off of this stuck place as we sail directly to you. And as we finish our course this year so that the things that you have in the future may come to pass. And that we can rejoice in you and you rejoice in us. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Spread the love. Hug one another. Thank you.